Consider five integers a, b, c, d, and e. When added pairwise, they yield sums minus one, three, five, six, six, eight, nine, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. I mean, it took me a long time to just understand this question. Find the largest of the five integers. And so they are all a, b, c, d, and e. Maybe some of these digits are equal. Maybe they are not. Let me ask. Let me see if they will be equal. If two digits are equal, right? Then if a and b were equal, a plus c would be same as b plus c. A plus d will be same as b plus d. A plus e would be same as b plus e. Sums would repeat. What this question is saying, when added pairwise, if I add a and b, I get one sum. B and c, I get one sum. D and d, I get one sum. A and d, I get one sum. C and e, I get one sum. B and e, I get one sum. Somewhere in some order, all those possible sums are these. I don't even know how many sums can be created. But in some sequence, they are like that. We want to find the largest of the five integers. First thing to infer. Yes. A bunch of these numbers are not equal. Only two numbers are equal. Okay. Because a bunch of these are not equal, I can straight away say that no two numbers are equal. Right. So A, B, C, D, E. I want to say, assume the numbers are A less than B, less than C, less than D, less than E. I am assuming them in some order, descending order or ascending order. A less than B, less than C, less than D. Right. Now, what will be the smallest possible sum? That will be adding these two. So if I add the smallest number and the second smallest number, I should get minus 1. Or A plus B is minus 1. Smallest possible sum is A plus B. Nice. Largest possible sum is D plus E. If I add these two, I get 15. If I add these two, I get minus 1. Sorry, minus 1. Nice. So far, so good. Now, let's go to the next sum. What will be the next sum? The smallest one is A plus B. The next possible sum could be A plus C, B plus C, A plus D. Think about everything else possible. A plus B. Instead of B, we could put C. We can have A plus C. A plus D, A plus C will be more than this. B plus C will be greater than A plus C. To A, I am adding C. If I add B and C, that will be higher. So, my smallest sum is minus 1. The next sum, next smallest, A plus C should be 3. One step higher. Instead of B, I have to put C. That's when I will get my next sum. Exact reasoning, this way around. D plus E is 15. The next total is 13. E plus C should be 13. Largest and second largest is 15. Largest and, and, and middle number should be 13. Nice. Brilliant. So, these are the equations I am going to work with. Now, what am I going to do? I am going to anchor this around some variables. Some, make some inferences. And so, smallest and second smallest is minus 1. Smallest and middle number is 3. So think about this. I have two numbers. They add up to minus 1. I take away 1 and replace it with another. My total increases by 4. My total goes up by 4. What does that mean? Instead of B, I put C. My total goes up by 4. What does that mean? This number C is 4 more than B. Brilliant. Now I am going to imagine these numbers on a number line. And A sits somewhere here. B is next. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. B plus 4 is C. Nice. So position this like that. Same idea. D plus E, sorry, E plus D is 15. E plus C is 13. E plus D is 15. E plus C is 13. Nice. E and instead of D, we put C and the total falls by 2. Or C is 2 less than D. From D, I subtract 2, I'll get C. Or from C, I add 2, I'll get D. Or another 2 more gives us D. 
C plus 2 is D, which is nothing but B plus 6. Nice. And so, instead of having A, B, C, D, E, we've got A, B, B plus 4, B plus 6 and E somewhere here. We do not, we do not yet know anything about E. Right? So, we'll come there. A plus B, A plus B plus 4, A plus B plus 6, A plus E. These are all different combinations. E plus B plus 6, E plus B plus 4, E plus B, E plus A. These are different combinations. Right? Now I'm going to look at the totals. A plus B is equal to minus 1. E plus B plus 6, E plus B plus 6 equals 15. To E, if I add B plus 6, it gives me 15. Lovely. So A plus B is minus 1. E plus B is 15 minus 6, which is 9. And so I'm going to write this down. A plus B is minus 1. E plus B is 9. Nice. Think about it. Instead of A, I put E, my total goes up by 10. Or E is effectively A plus 10. Another beautiful inference. So I'll not write E as E. I'll write E as A plus 10. Now I've got A, B, C, D, E in terms of A, B only. Now I can make a series of other inferences, see if I can make some conclusions. I'm going to re-evaluate it. A plus B is minus 1. A plus B is minus 1. A plus B plus 4 is 3. This is A plus C. The next total is 5. B A plus B plus 6 is 5. So this is A plus B, A plus C, A plus D. Right? Likewise, from this side, A plus 10 plus B plus 6. A plus 10 plus B plus 6 is 15. A plus 10 plus B plus 4 is 13. The next lower one is 12, which would be E plus B or D plus C. I can either take this and this or I can take this plus this. That will be my next sum. If I add this plus this, A plus B plus 10. A plus B is minus 1. Plus 10 would be 9. Whereas this plus this, it should be give, I, I have a total of 12. So I'm not doing E plus B. I'm doing D plus C to give this 12. The third number in the list. And so this plus this. The first two are E plus D, E plus C. After that, the third largest number could be E plus B or D plus C. E plus B, adding E and B, gives us A plus B plus 10. A plus B is minus 1, this is 9. Third largest is not 9, it is 12. Or that means if I add these two, I get 12. So I know that B plus 4 plus B plus 6 is 12. 2B plus 10 is 12. Or 2B is 2. B is 1. I am through. I get B as 1. Put this as 1. A plus B is minus 1. So A should be minus 2. B plus 4 is 5. B plus 6 is 7. A plus 10. Minus 2 plus 10. 8. Totals minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, minus 2 plus 5 is 3, minus 2 plus 7 is 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, minus 2 plus 8 is 6, 1 plus 7 is 8, 1 plus 8 is 9, 5 plus 7 is 12, 5 plus 8 is 13, 7 plus 8 is 15. All the totals match up. And so so this is a beautiful way of solving this question. The smallest two add up to minus one, largest two add up to 15, and then go step by step and keep on putting everything in as few variables as possible. You start with A, B, C, D, E. And you make the inference that C 
is just 4 more than B. You make the inference that C is just 2 less than D. So B, C, D can be linked with only one variable. Good. Then link A and D. Go step by step and solve this. And there is a more algebraic method of doing this. This is also algebraic, but this is number line step by step. The more algebraic method of doing this, I'm going to outline that to you. When you get more comfortable with A and B, you have the totals A plus B and then A plus C, A and D, A and E. Then you'll be adding B and C, B and D, B and E. Then we'll be adding C and D, C and E. To this we'll be adding D plus E. These are all the totals. We'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 totals. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 totals. So these all match up to each of these. Now if you add all of them, you'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 A's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 B's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 C's, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 E's, 4 D's and 4 E's. So 4 A plus 4 B plus 4 C plus 4 D plus 4 E, all of them put together. All of these put together is 4 times A plus B plus C plus D plus C. Okay. With that, we can find A plus B plus C plus D plus C. Straight away. We know this is A plus B. We know this is D plus E. So we can find the middle number. All five put together, we know. Smallest two we know, largest two we know, middle number we can find. If you find the middle number, everything else falls in place. It's the other approach, which is more algebraic, not putting number line, making inferences, but writing A, B, C, D, E, and then solving them. 